Thanks for tuning into this. Uh, this is again a learning experience through the painting tutorials. And so thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the video. Uh, please subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, follow. We are running a 200 uh, follower, like, subscriber giveaway on each of those platforms. So I, I'm going to be getting uh, pictures on the prizes. And it's going to be something we're going to keep doing as we build up viewerships for Dice of the Round Table. And for this one, again, I'm a bold action player. Uh, you're going to see some of that on the channel. And for what I did today is paying up this uh, Grenadier from Warlord Games. Uh, it's the newer set of um, German Grenadiers. So it's got the weapons molded on the arms. This one's not because I actually um, cut it and attached it. So I gave him a throwing grenade arm from not the Grenadier box, but from a different sprue. But uh, anyway, so... Come watch how I do this. I'm going to go through all the paints up front. I will be in the description. And then I'm going to time lapse the actual painting. This was about 40 minutes or so painting the entire guy. And why is this different? It's with contrast paints. A lot of the paints I used were contrast paints. So this is going to get you a table ready army rather quickly using some contrast paints and some regular painting techniques. I'm not uh, winner of anything so and I'm not even saying it's historically accurate with all the gear painted the right color and so forth but I am just showing what I do for my army I play for fun not historical accuracy that's just who I am so again thanks and see you on the as you see I have a German grenadier here put together he's got a machine gun replacement barrel rifle grenade so he can be a rifleman he could be a loader for a machine gun team, uh, some versatility in the model. This is Warlord's bolt action German Grenadier, the newer ones where some of the guns are actually molded as, onto the hands. So it is the newer set of Germans. And what we're going to do is he's already primed in Citadel Contrast uh, Gray Sear. The paints that we'll be using are going to be Army Painter Leather Brown and contrast snake bite leather. The flesh is going to be a army painter tan with gilliam flesh on top. I have a army painter matte black which will be used for uh, the guns. For the guns we have citadel lead belcher with army painter plate mail metal. For the slate highlighted areas. The wood is going to be painted a army painter fur brown. I will use uh, contrast paint black templar for the boots. For the uniform itself the pants I want to go with the gray pants with the green gray top. So the pants are going to be the basilicum gray. I'm sure I did that wrong. And the green gray that I have, it's in this Citadel cat, um, contrast chart. It is a blend 50 50 of Militarium gray or Militarium green with the Silicum gray. So I just poured about 50 50 percent mix. As my air conditioner, I'm sorry. The assorted gear. I'm going to use the Vallejo German Beige World War II, the canister, the gas mask canister, that's going to be the German Uniform Green, the sleeping bag bit for the backpack is going to be the German Cam Bright Green, and does he have hair? No, I don't see any hair on the bottom. And for the gear, the gun, it's going to be an Agrath Earthshade overall bag. That's the paints. Now let's get to the model. It's going to be time-lapsed. This is not geared towards being 100% historically accurate as far as the paint scheme goes. But the goal is to use contrast paints with some others and see how quickly we can do one figure. And how well it turns out using some contrast to help 
uh, speed up some of the process. So thanks for tuning in and let's get to the desk and time lapse it. This is starting with the Citadel Contrast Basilicum Gray going on to the pants. You will see later I did do two coats of this. And this is also the helmet which I initially forgot and then went back and touched up. This is now my gray-green mixture of Basilicum Gray and Militarium gray Green. And like I said earlier, this is a 50-50 mix I made. And since I have a lot of Germans, I made a full jar of it. So I have it ready at all times. This is when I forgot, realized I forgot the helmet. So I'm going back to the Basilicum Gray and uh, doing the helmet. This is now the Black Templar contrast paint, which is being used for the boots and the uh, small legging portion underneath the pants. And this is about one coat and it coats really well. Now I'm going to the Army Painter Fur Brown. This is going on the wood of the grenade stick the wood for the gun as well as shovel handle that you will see. This is the second coat of the Basilica Gray, and you'll see me periodically doing some touch-ups on some areas of the model as we go. And that is the second coat to give it a little bit darker shade. One coat I don't feel is enough. A second coat, it hits it just right in my opinion. This is the Model Air German Beige World War II. This is going on the sacks, the canvas cover for the shovel that I paint, and some other bits on the back that are gonna be this khaki-ish color. And then later on, you'll see the agrath over that. This is now the German Cam Bright Green, 
and a lot of people when they see this they ask me why I like how this looks after you hit uh, put the agrath earth shade on top of it it really dulls the brightness but if you just painted this as it is it is a pretty bright green and then this is going to be followed up with the army painter leather brown so i'm going to use this on most of the leather the mg barrel the water and uh pa other small pack that's on the back of the model as well as the belt uh, i also realized later on you're going to see me grab this really quick this is the um, straps on the front of the uniform for the sack as well as the belt area and then you will see I also do little leather brown touches on the canvas sack as well as small stripes on the helmet and there's also a chin piece that I think I forgot at one point that I did go back and just grab really quick and touch that up. I do enjoy putting the matte black on for wherever I'm going to do metals um, because I kind of just lightly dry brush with all my metallics over the black to give it a nice little look. I just It's just what I do and it works really well. So you're going to see me touching up the little parts of the gun, the explosive part of the grenade. That is where I hit the black at. And there's a little touch up on the chin strap. And yes, that is a piece of wax paper that I use as my palette. I put a drop of water on there and then put my paints. This is now the German uniform model color. This is for the gas can canister. It is a really nice uh, darker green. I don't, I've used this as a base coat on some of my other German bolt action. It just doesn't have enough gray in it for me. It's a, it's a nice solid green though. Next up is the tan flesh from Army Painter and I'll be doing the flesh parts, the arms and the face. And again, you'll see me thin it out a little bit as this goes on. Citadel lead belcher now in place. This is going to take care of being put on over the black for the gun as you can see and it'll be the explosive part of the grenade. And this is going to be the army painter plate mail metal that I'm just going to do on the site the ejection mechanism a little bit on the gun and just around some of the edging on the explosive part of the grenade just to give it a little contrast and a little pop when it's on the table and if you've made it this far do me a favor and just let me know uh, what other type of tutorials you enjoy i'm not a tutorial watcher normally so i know there's plenty of people that do and I do enjoy teaching and showing off my stuff so please in the comments let me know what other type of tutorials would you be looking at and this is now the snake bite le snake bite leather I am not putting this on everything it is going on everything on the packs of so the machine gun barrel case the water and the other pack I don't know what it's officially called I am not doing the straps but I am doing the belt so the straps don't get that orangey look 
Um, kind of just gives it a little dirty look, for, in my opinion, and I like leaving it like that. So I'm just hitting the little places with a little light snake bite. This is now the Gilliam Flesh s Contrast going over the flesh to get the recesses and uh, make sure we got the right coverage. And after that is going to be the Agrath Earthshade that will be going on the pack, the gun, and a little bit on the helmet to give it a, again a little bit more of a dirty worn look that'll be a little bit different from the pants. And here's the Agrath Earthshade. So appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for watching this. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.